God bless you. Welcome to Living Word Healing and Restoration Ministries today, uh, where our uh, pastors, Apostle Larry Herring and Prophetess Yuwandalyn Herring, we thank you for joining us here today. We're just going to open up with some worship unto the Lord. And I just want to encourage you as we get into the presence of God this morning that you would just lay down every care, every concern. Uh, that is on your mind. Um, there's so many things going on in the world. And we thank God that his presence is an oasis away from the chaos of this world. So I just want to encourage you to come into the presence of God and worship him. Give him glory. Give him praise for who he is. Let's open in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace, your power, your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to be in your presence, God. We thank you, God, that you have ordained this moment to have an encounter with you. So, Lord, I pray that your presence would saturate every atmosphere, God. Move in the homes of your people. Lord, set them free from discouragement. Set them free, God, from oppression. Set them free from sickness and disease. Set them free, God, from the battles in their mind. God, we call on you. And we need you, God, to move on the behalf of your people. So we invite your presence in. Invade our spaces. Invade our minds. Lord, we need you, and we call on your name, God. Move on our behalves. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. We're going to start with a song. We want to trade our sorrows. We want to trade our shame for the joy of the Lord. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. sorrows I'm trading my shame But now 
destroyed I am blessed beyond the curse For His promise will endure That His joy is gonna be my strength Though the sorrow may last for the night His joy comes in the morning Oh, I'm trading my sorrows I'm trading my shame Give God glory and praise. Come on, give him some glory and praise this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let the joy of the Lord fill your heart this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God is still able. Our God is still delivering. Our God is still working miracles in our lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. There's a little song that says that God is able to do exactly what he said he would do. And that he's going to fulfill every promise that he's given to you. Don't give up on God, for he won't give up on you. And he's still able. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask or think according to the power.
heart with faith this morning and say we make a miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God that is who you are come on sing one more time that he's a way maker we make a miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my God, that is who you are. We declare, we make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. For that is who you are. stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you working even when I don't feel it you working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never 
Prepare your heart for the word of God from Apostle Harry. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just lift up another praise and worship unto God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. We honor your name, O oh God. We bless your name, O oh God. We honor you, God. We declare that you're great, that you're able, God. And that you're moving on the behalf of your people. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Prepare your heart to hear the word this morning from Apostle Harry as he comes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless everybody. Um, this is Latricia Herring here. Um, the Apostle just asked me to share a few words with the body, and I really believe that the Lord gave me a couple of words to share with you. I pray that it's a blessing to everyone. Um, and that, you know, we can glean something out of it. So if you can go with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. And I'm going to read it in the King James Version first, and then I'm going to read it in the um, New Living Translation. It says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering." For bearing one another in love. And here's the key verse. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. The New Living Translation says, Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. Um, as I was just thinking on some of the things that are going on in our nation and in our world at this time, and the challenges that we're facing, um, it really was impressed upon me about unity. It's a very divisive time right now in the country. It's a divisive time, sometimes even within households. And in this climate where we have to isolate ourselves for the safety, it's very easy to get in our own worlds, in our own feelings, as people say, and really in tune with what we want, what we desire, what works well for us. And sometimes we can be insensitive to the needs of others. 
we can be insensitive to the will of the Lord and the things that the Lord really wants from us at this time. And so what we need to be mindful of as believers, as followers of Christ, that even in the midst of a time where it seems like it's so easy to be divided and divisive and contentious and at each other's throats, um, it's so important to keep the unity of the spirit. Um, and I really love the way it says it in this particular translation. It says, always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. And we know that the love that we have is more than just uh, the love that we have for family members and friends, but it's the love of Christ. And because Christ is in us, we're to make sure that we are operating in the love that he has called us to, to operate in. And, and that's at all times, even in our homes, we're believers before we're anything else. And so it's important for us to bear in mind what the scripture is saying about being humble and gentle and bearing one another's faults. And, you know, it's a time when we're really close to each other. We're spending so much more time with each other than we uh, most of us have, because most of us are going out, whether to a job or whatever tasks we have to do. We don't spend 24 hours a day in the same spot. But now we're in a place, position where it's a lot easier to rub each other the wrong way. It's a lot easier for there to be friction. And then the enemy likes to get in and take advantage of that and increase the friction, increase the divisiveness. You turn on the television and you have dissenting voices about what's going on in the nation, what's going on in the world, uh, the cause of it, the solutions for it. Nobody seems to have the same say the same thing. We are the body of Christ. We're going to have to be the ones to say the same thing. We're going to have to be the ones to say how it's going to be. And it's going to be the way the Lord said it's going to be. So in the scripture, Ephesians 3, uh, excuse me, Ephesians 4, verse 3 says, Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. Make every effort. If you need to take a few minutes and say, Lord, I need some grace, then that's the effort you have to put into it. You know, if you need to go into the restroom, shut the door and just shed a few tears and cry out to the Lord, that's what we have to do. If you have to turn the television off so that you don't say the wrong thing while you're watching all of these news going, uh, news uh, bits going forward and all of the media, you're going to have to do that because we are to make every effort to keep ourselves united in the spirit. You know, not hearing something that is not according to the word of God about a brother or a sister or about the way that the Lord says that things are going to be. This is us making every effort to stay united in the spirit because it says there's one body and one spirit and we've been called into one glorious hope. So it's unity that the Lord is calling for, especially at this time. And I think that we really need to be mindful of how we're speaking. We need to be mindful of... um what we're agreeing with, we just have to be mindful because we're the people of God. And in the midst of all the confusion, all the noise, they should hear one thing from this entire body of Christ, that God is going to get us through it, that he's going to strengthen and encourage us, that he's going to comfort those who have lost loved ones or who've had to go through this or who have had financial difficulties, that he's going to restore all things back into us because we belong to him and we should all be saying the same things. And so, um, not only that, but I was thinking about unity and a few scriptures were coming to my mind about unity. And I just want to kind of highlight a few of these scriptures. And I want to point out three things that I saw as I was going through the scriptures that unity produces. So the first thing also comes from the book of Ephesians. We're going to go further down the chapter four to verse 13. And chapter four, verse 13 um, reads, Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So it was talking, this is a scripture that many um, know very well. It's talking about the gifts and it's talking about um, the fivefold ministry. It's talking about he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and pastors and teachers. And he said the purpose is for the perfecting of the saints. Uh, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. And the next verse, verse 13, is really the goal of all of this building up of the body of Christ, the goal of um, building us up in the faith. 
it says, and I'm going to read that verse in the New Living Translation. It says, this will continue, this building up, this teaching, all of these gifts that are for the edification of the body. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete stature of Christ. So the first thing that I see that unity produces is maturity. That the whole purpose of the gifts of Christ are to bring us to unity together as one so that we're saying the same things, we're speaking the same things, we're believing the same things about the gospel of the kingdom. But the purpose is that we become mature in the Lord, not just one person mature over here, the next person mature later, but as a body, we become mature in the Lord. So unity, according to this scripture, produces maturity. You know, if you're wondering about some things, you're wondering about your growth, find out how much you're saying what God is saying. Think about how much you agreement you have in your life with, um, with the word of God. How much dissension is in your life? You want to grow in God? Do your best to keep the unity of the spirit. Go to the scripture, say what God says, read and find out what the Lord is saying. So unity produces maturity. The second thing that I was noting based on the scriptures that unity produces is found in Amos chapter three, verse three. And again, I'm going to read that again in the King James version. And then I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. So it says, um, the Lord is talking to his people. Um, he's basically reprimanding them as a good father does. But in chapter three, verse three, he says, can two walk together except they be agreed? He was talking about Israel following the Lord, agreeing with the Lord, going in the direction that he wants them to go. If you read that in the New Living Translation, it says, can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? So I was thinking about that. Can you, you can't walk together. You can't get anywhere. If you're supposed to be going together, you're not both going to get there if you haven't agreed where you're going. And so one of the things that I notice here is that unity produces direction. If you're looking for direction in your life, if you're trying to figure out what is it that God is saying, what, which way am I supposed to go? Um, let's check our unity. Are we saying what the Lord says? Has, has the Lord spoken anything to you personally or through his word? And have you been saying what, what he said there? Or are you saying what you're feeling? Are you saying what you're seeing? Are you saying what you can touch with your hands? Are you saying what your faith can touch? You can't get anywhere in God if you're not agreeing with God. Can two walk together except they be agreed? If you have relationships with people, um, family members, parents to children, siblings, spouses, friendships, you can't get to the same destination if you haven't even agreed on the destination. But unity produces that. And what happens when you're trying to be unified? You talk to one another. You come to an agreement and sometimes you compromise, but you have to agree that that's where you're going in order to find direction. And so when you come agreed as believers, it's agreeing with God, agreeing with what he's saying and what he's doing at that time. As individuals, it's agreeing with the people in our lives that God has placed in our lives and, and agreeing that this is the goal that we're setting and this is the direction that we're going. We have to we have to agree and find out what God is saying. And I just want to kind of interject here and say in the Greek, one of the meanings for unity is what you would expect. It means um, oneness, but it means agreement, agreement. And so when we, we hear me saying a lot, agree with God, agree with God. It, this is the unity that we're to find. If we're all agreeing with God, then we know we're agreeing with one another because God is one. And so, again, the second thing that I see that unity produces is direction, direction for our lives, direction for the body of Christ, direction for your ministry. That's what unity produces. And then the third thing that I see that unity produces is found in Psalm 133, verses one through three, um, particularly verse one. So in the scripture, uh, Give me a second to find it. So Psalm 133 says, 
Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. And in the New Living Translation, it says, How wonderful and how pleasant it is when brothers live together in harmony. For harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head, that ran down his beard and onto the border of his robe. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hermon that falls on the mountains of Zion. And there the Lord has pronounced his blessing, even life everlasting. So the third thing that unity produces is blessing, the blessing of the Lord. Because in verse three, it says, and there the Lord has pronounced his blessing. He's not talking about Mount Hermon. He's talking about unity. It's in unity that God is able to pronounce his blessing. So we find that unifying as a body, unifying as members of a family, unifying um, with the Lord as an individual in a relationship with the Lord, they produce the blessings of God. Um, if you have a lot of contention in your life, God will bless you because you belong to him. But those blessings are able to flow so much more easily when you have unity, when there's harmony. So again, the scripture in Ephesians 4 verses 1 through 3, it says we're to do all that we can to see that we're in unity. If there's dissension, if there's discord, then we need to get on our knees and pray. We have authority in God. We can take authority over spirits of contention and strife that try to come in our homes or in our minds when our minds seem to be confused and we have... We don't know which way to go. We don't know what to do. We can we can talk to the Lord. We can pray. We can get in the word and find out what God is saying. What are you saying, God? What are you saying in your word? Or we can recall the things that God has spoken to us individually. And we can repeat those things and meditate on those things. And as we find ourselves unifying with God and unifying with one another, we see the blessings of God begin to roll forth in our lives. We begin to see the blessings, not just financial blessings, but blessings in the spirit, blessings in the kingdom, blessings upon our ministry as a body, blessings upon our individual ministries. It's unity. It's, it's the unity of God. And it's so important at this time that we see this and we see it as a spiritual thing, not just as something good to do, but something that God wants. It's the purposes of God that we be unified because when we're unified, all things are possible to us. So again, I just want to reiterate, unity produces maturity in our lives. Unity produces direction in our lives and it produces the blessings of God. So I pray that what I've said, excuse me, I pray that what I've said has blessed you that maybe you can take it and apply it to your lives. Maybe you can share it with someone else. Let's be unified. Let's not let the enemy get in and cause contention and strife. So now I just want to say a prayer and just pray that God unifies us as a body of Christ and as believers. Can you pray with me now? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for your people. We thank you for the kingdom of God. We thank you for the children of God. We thank you that you have made us to be kings and priests before you, Lord, that we have access to your throne and we have authority. And so now, Father, we unite, we agree with you, Lord God, that unity is what you want and we can do it because we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so we take authority over spirits of dissension. We take authority over spirits of contention. We take authority over the, the evil spirits that come in to, and to divide and to cause strife and anger and resentment and bitterness. We bind the principalities and the powers that have come up against the people of God to challenge them at this time and to, to try to negate what God is saying about the people of God, what he is saying about our society, what he is saying about our futures. We take authority over them now in the name of Jesus and command the peace of God to come. Lord, we thank you, Father, for the peace of God in the minds of your people, the peace of God in the hearts of your people, that we can be assured that you are with us, that you will see us through each and every challenge, and that on the other side of every challenge is the blessings of God, is the strength of God, is the encouragement of, the God, of God, and the future that you have destined for us, God. 
So we bless you now, Lord. And I speak a blessing upon the families, upon each listener, each individual. I speak the blessings of peace, the blessings of the Spirit of Christ Jesus. We thank you, Father, for unifying our hearts and our minds together in love. And we praise you for you are great and you are mighty. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you.